Hello, everyone, and welcome to Your Daily Detroit. It is Friday, July 19th, 2024, coming to you from our studio at Tech Town in beautiful Detroit, Michigan. I am Jer Stays, and across the table from me is none other than Mr. Friday, Mr. Man About Town, Devin O'Reilly. How are you, sir? Thank you, Jared. Great to be here. Uh, gorgeous Friday. Uh, I don't know if we're in the dog days of summer yet, but we're probably getting close. Um, so this is always a nice little respite. Well, for me, I got to say, uh, one night this week, I don't remember which one, it was like 62, 63 in the morning. I was like, this is glorious. Yeah, no, it's it's the, the mornings, the last couple of days have been really, really nice. I appreciate it. You know, you don't, you're not already drinking the air in. Well, you know, and what we're going to do is talk about drinking. Well, this time we coffee. Are, yeah, and you – so we went – this is – these type of mornings, you can kind of go either way. I went hot. You went cold. I uh, stopped over on my way out to uh, to record at a ooh, a new coffee shop in Dearborn that um, – it's been around, so they've been roasting for a while. It's called Shabam. I've actually mentioned it on the podcast before in a different location. Wasn't that a movie with Shaq? Shazam. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Shazam with Shaq. No, it was not. That was that was Shazam. He was a genie. This is Shabam, which is a town in Yemen, which was the birthplace of coffee. This oh. is what they're this is what they're saying. Shabam. It was the birthplace of coffee, um, and uh, the first city with skyscrapers. So they're there. You can't see this on the if you're uh, listening. Obviously, actually, but, if you yeah, but if the video pull that cu- that cup up for a second, uh, like right to camera there. It's it's the first city with skyscrapers. Um, it had multiple uh, multi level housing that were kind of like put together. So Shabam. Anyway, long story short, that is technically the birthplace of coffee. Uh, Yemeni coffee has been you know exploding and been just been going crazy in terms of popularity, in terms of the proliferation of coffee shop restaurants. They are everywhere now, from Texas to New Jersey to California to Florida. Uh, it's just very entrepreneurial, and we've had people from uh, from uh, Kawa House on here before. And there's another uh, uh, Yemeni chain that's coming in the old Starbucks space too. Yeah, it's it's they're just incredibly entrepreneurial, and the growth is amazing. So this is a new building that, uh, or not not a new building, but a new facility on Schaefer Road in uh, in Dearborn, between Ford Road, basically right between Ford Road and Michigan Avenue on Schaefer there. And they're going to roast on site there. They have their warehouse on site there, and they have a Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful coffee shop. Took some pictures. We'll put them up on social media. Uh, if you you, know, you want to see what this looks like inside, it's pretty incredible event space, meeting space. Coffee is amazing. We've talked about it before. Yemeni coffee is just very, very different. And do you taste it with your latte? Oh, I mean, of course. Like that's part of the reason like Yemeni coffee is an experience because it has like a deeper flavor to it. Mm-hmm. You know, I I really love it. I know that it's not for everybody, but for me, I'm definitely into it. And then like balancing out with the, this this latte. But what am I drinking? Because I don't actually know since I didn't order this. Well, it it's it's a Shabam latte. Okay. So it's kind of their their standard latte. I can't really explain that we talked before. They leave a lot of like the spice and the Oh, there's husks. lots of spice in so, here. So like my my hot coffee, I got the um the Sanani, which is their kind of standard. And sometimes they put sweetener in it. I got it no sweetener, but they leave a lot of the uh, the their sediment. That's what you know, like when, when you start drinking the sediment, you know, you've got to the bottom of the cup. So they leave a lot of that in with the coffee. It's very kind of rugged, um but it makes for a smooth flavor overall. Um, and so they add, you know, they add, uh, they, they add cream, um, and some um, ac- extra kind of spices that they're, you know, magic spices. They don't say exactly what's in there. Definitely a little bit of a uh, little bit of turmeric and, um, and some other things. Uh, well, if like, if you like a chai, you will like this for sure. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And you can get it as sweet as you want. Again, cold or iced. They have pastries there. Really cool. They're, ex- they're again, they're expanding. And to this podcast, uh, the owner uh, Mansoor was telling me that, you know, they've recently opened up in, in Canton, Michigan. So if you're in Canton, there's a, there's a Shabam there. Um, they've opened up in, uh, Texas near Dallas. So going that way. And for, uh, listeners who happen to live or pass through the Midtown area, they're opening up in the new Hillbury theater expansion. Wait, is that new? Yeah, this is, it's, they so this are is new news. This is, this is breaking news. I, I spoke with uh, the gentleman today who owns the space and he was saying they're working on um, a space in the Hillbury Theater. So it'll be in the theater, but they'll also have like a window and outdoor seating um, you know, right outside the theater there in, in Midtown. There will be an embarrassment of riches in Midtown with coffee, considering hey. where that is and what it's next to. Because I think there's Cafe Souterre, there's coffee in the Shinola, there's coffee... Like the, all very is. different though. Yeah, that's what's cool. It's all very different. You know, Cafe Souterra, I love the fact that it's one of those like boozy coffee shops. Uh, Shinola, really straightforward. They have really good lattes. And this, you know, clearly the Yemeni coffee is something very, very different. 
And if you're getting a latte out that way, this is a complete bit of capitalism. Go check out City Bird and Nest, our friends over there, uh, th- for your gift or whatever. It's it's th- like if there's somebody in your life you want to do something nice for, stop by City Bird or City Bird or Nest. Oh, absolutely. There's always a reason to get a gift from there, whether it's uh, congratulations, see you later, whatever it may be. Um, yeah, for sure, we'll throw them an endorsement. Um, so aside from the coffee, we've been a few places. So let's just let's just uh, level set here uh, for folks listening. We're going to be talking about a few places that we've been to. Because, hey, what's 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 more daily Detroit than about towning? I agree completely. And then I think we're going to end with a little bit of reactions to what has been one of our most popular episodes and posts we've ever done. Because when you reach 600,000 people when talking about the Rensen, we got to talk about it, which I don't I'm still we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, in a second. You, say, you, you tell me these numbers, Jared, and I'm like just I even screen them. captured because I'm like, I couldn't believe it. pretty crazy. So let's let's talk about some some small businesses and then we'll get into the big stuff. Um, you where was your where's your where's your first about towning place? Well, I got in the spaceship and I became a Ferndalian for mm-hmm. a day. Is that what they're called? I believe so. Well, I think maybe I'm the more I've even seen like the Ferndale alien for a while. Like I saw that on social media. Ferndale? Yeah, what that? What are Ferndale, Ferndale, Ferndaleans? Yeah, right. Right. Be well, what else would it be? Fern, Ferndale, Ferndander, Fern, Ferndalites, Fern, Ferndagander. No, no, it's, it's, it's got to be Ferndaleans. Somebody from Ferndale, please correct us. Yes, I want. I would love to know. DailyDetroit at Gmail dot com. What is the uh, overwhelming thing? But I think it's Ferndalian. Uh, my first uh, thing I'll mention out of there is one I've been to before, but I think I want to give it a shout out. It's like an old school diner in a strip mall. You're going to laugh at me, but Christine's Cuisine mm. is quite good, and the value for money is is excellent. It's one of the few places you can still spend around 10 bucks and get, like, a decent, like, solid meal, and, like, it has, like, huge diner vibes, even though it's not in the old diner kind of diner space. Okay. Uh, huge diner vibes. And, you know, the other thing I would mention is that there's actually at the Henry Ford a diner exhibit coming. Like on historic diners. Oh, because they have Lamy's already there. Yes. That's the functioning diner. Um, but and pe- people love it. And so. this is what made me think yeah. of it is this going to Christine's, which they have like this uh, bomb burrito. It's like less than 10 bucks and chicken and all the things. That's the thing that I love about it. I love value for money. And we're about to roll out a new program on Daily Detroit to help highlight these great places. And we're, it's going to be our recommendations. It's not going to be popular vote. In fact, if you are a member on Patreon, you will be able to nominate places that we look at. But the idea being, we're going to do the best stuff. We're going to do the best stuff that's like value for money or whatever it says it's going to be. And so I think Christine's Cuisine is a great choice because if you want good diner vibes and if you want like friendly people and good food for not a bazillion dollars, that's like that's a win. And it's in a nondescript strip mall just uh, east of the railroad tracks near downtown Ferndale. Oh, OK. OK. I can picture where that is. Very cool. Well, you, we need more places like that. So you, you did you you spent the day in Ferndale and continued to where? Okay, so uh, I went a little bit fancier for the second stop. Well, you you saved money in the first stop. So. Well, exactly, and I put it towards. You may not believe this, but I actually ate sushi. I don't take you as a sushi guy. I'm not, and I there's certain a lot of it that I can't have, and most of the way I actually had a sesame chicken. Okay. Uh, people I went with had like lettuce wraps and some other things. Actually, a really good Asian street corn, but I went to Tiger Lily. You know, I've never Ferndale. been. I've heard so much about it. Oh, this would be up your, like, this would be up your vibe. Okay. I think 100%. There's the indoor space, the outdoor space, hanging kimonos, um, actually a really good drink program. One oh. of the reasons you would like it, if you're up there for a meeting or something, because I know in your work about town, you get strewn about the region at times. Absolutely. And the drink program, I've had that, it's actually really good. Of course, Asian flair, but really good. Yeah. Okay. Did you did you have any of the cocktails or just notice the menu? I've had the cocktails before. I can't remember all of them off the top of my head, but I had a really so they lean really in, good time. They lean into the kind of the Asian theme of the the restaurant. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, as I said, right in downtown Ferndale, right on that strip, right near where we do Ferndale Pride and all that kind of stuff. So right in the heart of everything. Gotcha. Well, this isn't uh, a place I've been uh, that isn't quite in Ferndale, but it was it's the same people of the Ferndale Project. Um, Eastern Market Brewing, uh, as we 
we talk about them all the time because they do a lot of cool stuff. So you made it out there. I want to hear about it. I, I didn't. I'm very jealous of you. I made it out to Elephant & Co. We discussed that they were doing their grand opening. I didn't go to the actual grand opening. Uh, I went uh, during a weekday for lunch, which again, Jerry, you know that's a sweet spot for me. Are you open for lunch during the week? Because if I will want, visit you. If, if you want Devin to patronize your establishment, you need to be open for lunch. It's just that simple. And if you're going to serve me a drink, even better. And this place delivered. Uh, I had mentioned on a previous show, I've been there for the coffee and the donuts. So did my little review on that. Fantastic. Dupe vegan donuts. They had those there. Um, but yeah, they've just reformatted the whole founder space. It's, it's almost, it's bigger, it's brighter. Um, they finished with the full rebrand, the paint, the, the branding, it's now all white and black. Cause that's kind of the elephant and co-branding. Um, the general setup is the same, but what was cool is, you know, when you first go in there, you kind of need someone to walk you through it. But once you go once, uh, it, it becomes so much easier because essentially all of it is done uh, contactless. So your phone is where you order and then the food either comes out or you pick it up from the, the station. Or even if you go to the station, the, the food station where they have pizzas and salads and they even have kids menus, um, you just order from kind of like a kiosk tap screen mm. and then it comes out. So there's, it, it's, it's no, no kind of servers, although people will come around and check. I was sitting outside because it was a beautiful day and someone came around and checked on me, but there was no actual server. How do you feel about that in general? I kind of like it, but it does take some getting used to. You know, they had, again, they had to show me. They gave me the wristband. So I, I did, I got some pizza. I got the, the fungi pizza with mushrooms and different cream sauce. Delicious. And gar big roasted garlic pieces on it. It was delicious. They have a four, pie four piece, which really is two people because they're big. So a four piece, I couldn't even finish it. And then they have an eight piece that'll probably feed, you know, three or four people. Uh, so they have the pizzas. And then the beer program, as I've mentioned before, was going to be this uh, self-serve tap, which I've never done before. I know a lot of people have done the self-serve tap thing. I had never done it before, so I didn't know what exactly to expect. I kind of had an idea, but they gave me a wristband um, that had a little kind of RFID or something in it, and they have all the, the taps on the wall explaining what the beer is, all of our your Eastern Market favorites. If you've been to Eastern Market Brewing Concept, you know they've got all sorts of different IPAs, lagers, sours, non-alcoholic beer. I want to point out there was at least four to five different non-alcoholic beer and cider options, and you simply tap your wrist to the to the, the screen on the, the tap you want, the flashes, pour, go ahead, and you pour as much as you want, and then it tells you how much you're pouring and then how much you have left, because each wristband is, I believe, 32 ounces. So it'll tell you, like, all right, you just poured seven ounces. You have 23 ounces left to pour, which is fantastic. Then you can keep track of how you're drinking. If you want to taste a beer, you just pour a little ounce, try it, you can go to another beer. There's like It's, it's kind of cool. It's like a little playground of, uh, of beer pouring. Nice, nice. I, uh, I'm so excited to see all these things happening because I think people for a while got a little worried that uh, we were going to lose a lot of things. And I think what this really is, is yes, we did, but also a readjustment to how things are. There's like this yeah. random stat that I saw that actually uh, our overall gas demand as a country, like gasoline demand, is way down. Mm you know, this year and down that it like it's only touched the, the peak of nine million gallons like once this summer or something. And then part of that, I think, is changing. Obviously, you've got EVs and everything else, but also just changing commute patterns and how people how people do things. And I think uh, it's best to just adjust to the world that we're going into as opposed to, you know, wishing for the world that we had because it's not coming back. Yeah, it was more of a ground shift. And, and so you had a lot of things did close. But by and large, in those situations, new things came into those places. And then, like we said, there were more, there were places that were more formatted for the times we live in. And I think Founders is a perfect, the Founders to Elephant Co. is a perfect example. Well, and what made me think of it is those self-serve taps and like the less servers, because that feels to me, yes, something a lot of people like, because look, I know a lot of people who just don't want to deal with people, but also an adaptation. Yeah. And, I, and, and again, this is the thing, this is the, 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 the thing we always walk, the line we always walk here is, I, and I want to be clear, this, having the self-serve taps was fantastic and being able to just kind of on my phone order up a pizza or order you know another pizza or and that sort of thing that was awesome but i don't want people to think that this is somehow then just destroying the service industry or service economy because there was lots of workers still in there there was people making the pizza there's people making the coffee there was folks at the hostess stand who were explaining to me how to work the tags and walking me through so it's not like 
all of a sudden we're going in and there's not a, not a human in there and it's just all robots. Like this is just a, it's a shift, it's an adaptation and it's definitely more efficient, but we're not necessarily eliminating all the, the humans out of this. Now, before we get into a little bit of reactions, we do need to pay a bill. And, uh, you know, Daily Detroit is brought to you in part by your best choice, roofing. In my mind, there's one choice for roofing around here, and I would go with your best choice. That's because Daily Detroit, well, listen, here's the deal. I live in a house that's like 100 years old, and Detroit roofs are actually really difficult to deal with. Older homes roofs are deal difficult to deal with. Here's the thing. Best choice is going to handle them all. Whether you're in the city of Detroit or the region, best choice is the way to go. Whether it's time to replace your roof, repair it, inspect it, or get your gutters cleaned, best choi choice roofing provides top-notch roofing services tailored to meet the unique needs of our homes and businesses. Find out more at bestchoiceroofing.com slash Detroit. That's bestchoiceroofing.com slash Detroit or call 313-474-7031. That's 313-474-7031. All right, Devin, how are we feeling? Because you, you did a thing last week, man. Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm feeling, I'm a bag of emotions for all sorts of different reasons, uh, you know, <laughs> social, political. It's a, it, I can't help but think of the anchor man. Like, I am a cake glass case of emotion. Glass case of emotions, but I've, I've always been pretty good at kind of keeping my cool. Um, there's a lot going on in the world right now. But, um, yeah, we did a thing with the show that really touched on uh, a, a nerve. And, uh, I, I, I mean, what are we going to say? We're going to pat ourselves on the back? I mean, it did well because everything I've heard since, and maybe you'll start the conversation here, the, everything I've heard since is that we were spot on. That is exactly what's going to happen. Yes, and for reference, we're talking about the Renaissance Center and some of the things that you said, uh, and we have both kind of worked on, there is a change coming. And even in the aftermath with people who know, uh, it seems like that change is like you're holding firm and like this wave of nostalgia that came online and strong thoughts about like the architecture and the building and how could this happen I feel like, remember how we talked about how things are going to move faster in Detroit? Yeah. That's what this is. And I also think things like mothballing buildings will never happen again. No. This, this, is, this is a different era in Detroit. Like, again, it's another, I don't have any control over this, but it, it, this is how it's going to be now. We're moving, we're, we're moving in that direction. The economy, the economic forces are, you know, we have headwinds, so we can move on things like that. We're not in a depressed economy, despite what some people say. Um, we're not in a dep depressed economy, so economic development like this can happen. There's money to finance projects like this, especially from uh, people like Dan Gilbert and Bedrock. Look, Michigan Central sitting, and this is a big thing. Lots of people have said, why don't we just mothball those towers? That was a big thing. And um, things like what happened with Michigan Central are not the norm. Like that isn't that is a unique time in in, in history. And what are we holding on to? I you know I would challenge someone to say like, look, I'm okay. You've been in the rent center. Have you actually been in the office towers? Have you actually spent a lot of time in the office towers there? What there's nothing to hold on to. Um, if a couple of them come down, which good news, bad news for people listening. Yeah, a couple of them are coming down. At least. At least. So what, what are you really holding on to? You're still going to have the rent. It's still going to exist. It's going to exist in a better format. You know, it's like the nostalgia to me is 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 kind of um, uh, not delusional, but uh, you're, what are you holding on to anymore? The food court's closed. The winter garden is, is, is empty, but it's still a beautiful space. Like we can do so much more to open that up to the riverfront. And that's exactly what this plan is going to do. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm very excited for it. Well, since you seem to have a, you know, an idea of, of things. One of the challenges that I saw was, well, what about like reuse? What about environmental impact? What about demolishing and like all those sorts of things? Yeah, well, you're getting out of my purview, Jer. Frankly, I I don't know the best way to demolish a building. I don't know. Well, no. What I'm what I'm saying is that demolition is wasteful. Like uh, like there's a well, lot of the comments are basically people, and I don't mean to dismiss them, but I think there's a large gap between public knowledge and like actual on the ground situations. Yeah, a demoing is wasteful, but I guess it's, there's a lot, you could argue that having a building sit empty is also wasteful. You know, you still HVAC and all that stuff. So you tear it down, you build something new, whatever something new is, is gonna be, whether it's a new building or whether it's new green space, whatever it is, I'm sure it's gonna be more energy efficient. I'm sure it's gonna be more envi environmentally friendly because that's just how people think now. They didn't think like that in 1972 or whatever when they built this. Well, and technology. So I think about a project in Chicago that Google did, it's actually over a train hub. And that's one of the reasons why they couldn't demolish it. They reclad the entire building because the old technology is way outdated. 
you know, and, and it's basically a building that is being rebuilt from the inside out because you can't demolish it because of its location. The technology is different. What about the idea too, and maybe this is more in your purview, of losing an icon? A lot of people wrote in saying, well, we took a step forward with Michigan Central. We're taking, taking a step back because this feels like we're losing something, much like the times when I talk to people and they go, well, I don't want to take a lane of roadway away because it feels like we're less than, even though a lot of these roadways are way underutilized. You can go throughout the city and parts of the region and see roads that like, you could literally take a lane off either side and not make a difference, but it feels like a loss. But we're doing something new with it. I mean, again, we're not taking down the main. To me, the icon is the fact that it's the tallest building in Michigan. To me, the icon is the 730-something foot tower that sits in the middle. Um, to me, the icon is the winter garden and how it sits on the, the river. We're not moving the Ren Center. It is still going to be that giant monolithic structure that sits on the Detroit River that you know is still our, our, our icon if we want it to be. It's just going to have less towers, man. It's just going to have less towers, and it's going to look so much nicer. It's going to look less... Um, less uh, you know, kind of uh, brutalist and, um, and and cold and be much more warmer and open to kind of the elements and the rest of the city. Um, I just think it's overall an improvement. And if you have to lose some square footage of class A office space from 1970 something, like that's not a great loss. We're not losing some super, super, uh, you know, historically significant structure because we are maintaining the Ren Sun. We're just renovating it uh, in a very creative and substantial way. I think about some of the people who have talked about uh, reunions or, you know, high school graduations. Well, that hotel tower is still going to be there. And you yeah. mentioned monolith. Uh, in fact, if you take some towers out, uh, it will become more of a monolith. <laughs> like, because monolith is one. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. It, mon yeah. It would, it would be, it could become a singularly monolithic structure, much like the Peachtree uh, Hotel in Atlanta, which I've stayed at before. Uh, Rob Portman designed basically the Peachtree Atlanta is just the middle of the Rensen. So this exists. And uh, a, in seemingly successful fashion. Well, I welcome everybody's feedback on everything, whether it's this or the places that we've been to, dailydetroit at gmail.com. As always, thank you to our members on Patreon, patreon.com slash dailydetroit for keeping this thing going. We've got a very active member-only Discord. And in fact, uh, just the other day, I snuck in a conversation to them that they're going to see and that they saw before all of you did uh, on the podcast feeds just because, well, they're members and they're special and they help keep us going. So I appreciate them. Keeping it juicy for the members. I like it. Absolutely. And of course, thanks to Best Choice Roofing. Thanks to the, all the people behind the scenes who make this thing happen. We appreciate you. With that, I'm Jer Stays. I'm Devin O'Reilly. Thank you so much for listening. Remember that you are somebody and we'll see you around Detroit.